Good afternoon. My name is Annie Williams, and I am an intern at Somerville Media Center. And today I am joined by Miss Allison Mitchell and Kathy Piantagini. She is the library director for all three branches at Somerville Public Library. And Allison Mitchell is the interim uh, branch manager at the West Branch that is under construction right now. Uh, thank you so much for coming to talk to me today. Well, thanks for having us. How are you both doing, and how are your family's doing? How's your summer been so far? Oh my gosh, so many good questions. <laughs> uh, well, everything is good. My family is good. Um, the summer, believe it or not, I'm trying to take some time and enjoy it. Um, Allison, what about you? Well, I have um, a rising ninth grader and a rising seventh grader, so their summer is a little different than what they had planned, but they're doing great, and therefore, the rest of us are doing great. <laughs> We're as happy as they are. That's good. That's good. Yeah, you can't go wrong when kids are happy during a situation right now, and like on top of that being out of school for so long and everything is different, so I'm glad that they're doing well. <laughs> yeah. So I think today we're going to talk about, um, well, we can talk about whatever you'd like to talk about, but I think what we're most interested in talking about is this no contact delivery book drop off that you guys have implemented due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about that and tell me how that program has been going? Sure. Um, so we rolled it out. This is the first full week, actually. It just started this week. Um, up until then, we only had access to, or patrons had access to virtual programming and our e-resources. But uh, the libraries pretty much uh, were frozen in time starting around the 12th of March. And that meant that there were a lot of materials that were just sitting on our hold shelves waiting for patrons to come and pick them up. So we had to first go back and process that. And then we needed to go and process a lot of the bins that we started to get from other libraries. Um, and actually, Allison can speak to the details much better than I can, because she's working with the material every day. But for my part, um, we needed a couple of weeks ahead of time just to get the staff back in the building. Um, so none of us really had been back since mid-March. So we had to develop schedules that separated the staff so that we had um, we were being mindful of social distancing and, and also trying to offer some form of protection in case somebody, I hate even mentioning it every time it comes out of my mouth, but if someone were to come down with it, at least some of the staff hopefully were protected from it and that sort of thing. So, and we all had to get used to being back at the library again and used to seeing each other again and, and it not feeling like a really weird thing. So there was a lot kind of going into it actually. And we were in the building for two weeks, I think, um, to kind of get over all of that and then start planning the contactless pickup. And Allison, um, like I said, you should just go and have at it because, yeah. Well, I love what you said, Kathy, about the libraries being frozen in time. We got back into the West Branch and all our calendars were still on March. And, you know, I had a big sweater on my chair. And, <laughs> so, you know, all of us, but it was, it was June. Um, so, yeah, we had to, we had to catch up. Um, we had at the West Branch and same at Central and East, just shelves full of books that people were planning to pick up in March. And so we contacted all of those people um, and some of them were delighted to have their books. Oh, I've been waiting for months. Some said, I don't even know why I wanted that in the first place. We'll send it back. <laughs> so we worked through um, all of the, the backlog of holds and then caught up on the holds that were in transit between different Minuteman libraries. Um, and that took two solid weeks to do all the backlog, backlog at the three libraries. It's, it's, um, it's a little more intense than someone might imagine. Um, and now um, we're able to start filling new holds and patrons can go online, go to our website, um, somervillepubliclibrary.org and follow a link to schedule a pickup um, at any of the three branches, and we will fill their hold and bring it downstairs um, or outside in a 
in a paper bag and leave it um, at a um, appropriate distance away for them to pick up. And then we stay there, right? We don't want someone walking off with the wrong set of books. But <laughs> we, um, but so far, uh, we've been doing this almost a week, and it's working really well. That's awesome. Have you made any adjustments to? I, I don't know if you have like a standard practice of how many books people can take out and like you know, a normal setting, not in a pandemic, but have you adjusted that due to this new resource and the fact that, you know, people can't come to the library? Like what, what does the ordering process look like for them? Well, it's interesting because, you know, pre uh, pandemic, we were all, not only did we have and all libraries for the most part have very generous um, lending parameters as far as how many things that you can check out and for how long. But when the pandemic came and we all started going back to work, we don't have um, borrowing through our the Minuteman Library Network right now. So it's very old school in that way, if you can imagine that. So we're not sharing material with say like Arlington or Watertown or some of the other, net, there's 40 of us. Um, so we're relying on just the branches and just the Somerville collection. So the other thing that happened behind the scenes was we had some orders that um, of new material that came after we were closed. And so a lot of that also needed to get processed and get sent up, which is good for us because, you know, we had some newer material already, but basically any Somerville residents can go into the online catalog and do a search for Somerville specific material and put those on hold. And that's what comes up on our paging list. That's what we call that. And so every day we'll go and grab all of those items and patrons also can call us and talk to somebody over the phone now because our buildings are staffed. So if you would rather not search the catalog or maybe you have a more in-depth question, um, you know, you can always call us and we'll do the exact same thing for you, but over the phone. So, but I'd like to think, and I'm sure that this is the case, we, we don't have any limitations. I don't think we capped it. Um, we're encouraging people to take out as much material as will make them happy. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's really great. Um, now you were talking about, you had like, um, electronic resources. Do you have books that are available via the website that are, that are not in print that people can access if they want? Well, so we have a couple of different options. One of them is Overdrive, which is probably the biggest e resource we have because it's something that we share not only through the Minuteman Library Network, but pretty much every library in the state. Okay. And that gives you access to e, oh my gosh, I always blank on this. It's both, is it, it's not just audio. It's also downloadable books, right? Yeah. yeah. Both formats. Mm -hmm. And that isn't necessarily thing. That's more for things that are in print um, and have copyright dates and that sort of thing. And then another e-resource we have is Hoopla, which is another great one because it offers a little smattering of everything. But again, that's all content that would be, well, I say in print, but that's a good question. I never thought about that. I wonder if there are something else in what do you think about that? I don't know like if, if something might be available yeah. electronically, but not in a hard copy. I suppose that it's possible. Yeah, I never, it's a good question, actually. I mean, I'm always thinking about e-content just being things that are available um, and still have, they're still being published, essentially. Unlike, say, our print collection, which we have many books that went out of print many years ago, and we right. still have multiple copies of them. But that's a really good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. But anyway, the, both of those resources offer a wide array of options for, um, for readers and people who listen to stories. And then we also have uh, Canopy, which is kind of like Netflix, um, but it's more skewed for independent movies and documentaries. And borrowers that are Somerville residents can download uh, 10 things a month. And they have also a robust family collection that I think allows you even a little bit more than 10 because of the way you download it. 
Yeah, I can't speak highly enough about all three of those services. I yeah, I had used cool. Overdrive through the Libby app before pandemic, but I'd actually never used Hoopla or Canopy, and now they're you know, they're my go to. Yeah. Um, all three are really great services. Yeah. yeah. Actually, and I'll plug another one, too, because last year we subscribed to one called Creative Bug, which is a good one for people who like to craft or are makers, where it's um, streaming video for just about any kind of craft that you can imagine. I actually used it a few years ago. I had a personal subscription to it, and um, it helped a lot when I was learning to teach myself how to sew. And now we make that available for um, Summerville residents for free. That's awesome. Um, how, how was this service and program implemented? Did you have feedback from the residents of Somerville? And is that how you, how, how this idea got brought on? Like how, how did it, how did it uh, come to be? Well, I think immediately So it it really is nice to be part of a network like we are, like the Minuteman Library Network. Pretty much all public libraries belong to some network like that. And so the communication right out of the gate is good um, because I get an opportunity to talk to other library directors. Um, Allison, I'm sure you're networked with other children's and youth Mm -hmm. services librarians. And also, I think, generally speaking, we all have the want and desire to not sit still. This is one of the the few times when it's really hard for us because in times of crisis, the libraries are always open. So when we went through a financial collapse back in 2008, you know, we had a big uptick in library use and we had our doors open and people came in, but this time we were telling people, no, it's not safe for you. Um, And so we tried, I think it's honestly an instinct of all of us to just want to do whatever we can. And so in the very early stages, we just kind of used our social media platforms and started offering story times and sing-alongs. And we um, have our East Branch librarian, Marita, is well-connected with uh, Lloyd Schwartz, the local poet who was doing really wonderful programs in East Somerville at the library before we closed. And as long as people are willing to kind of hop onto a technology and learn it, which a lot of us did, it was, um, it really inspired, I think, everyone to keep doing it. And so the only thing I feel really bad about is it reminds you, too, that there is still a digital divide because as much as we try, you know, those services you don't really get to everybody, essentially. But we do get to a lot of people, which which I'm very grateful for. But, yeah, so I would say... Um, You know, it really was just what I think is we we had a lot of great feedback from our patrons. So the minute we put ourselves out there and we told people, you know, come here, these are things we're doing. I mean, everyone was so grateful and um, appreciative. And and if I heard anything, um, it really was the encouragement, like to do more to like get to that next step and everybody was like wondering about when we were going to offer contactless pickup so that was like a big okay people were really clamoring for that because all the libraries do it a little bit differently we're all talking and working together but we all have other obligations municipally so we and we're all different sizes so we move at different paces and so once some of the libraries around us started offering it you know our summerville residents are very savvy and they were like hey so and so library is doing contactless pickup like when are you gonna do it and we just needed the time it took for us to feel to get to a point where it was safe to do that but all of the feedback it has been really wonderful and supportive. So that's that's awesome. Um, so the so the um, the books that you send out to people, um, what's the process like of getting getting them back and then you know putting them back on the shelf or you know like you know make making sure that you know 
things are still sterile and safe? Like what was, uh, how did you create a system where it was safe and suitable for everybody in the event that people return books? Allison, you should take it. Sure. So um, when people return items to the library, they immediately go into quarantine for 72 hours. And that's, um, there have been various studies done um, on how long the virus might last on a library item. And we are well on the more cautious side. So we're, we're really um, taking care to quarantine these items for more than an appropriate amount of time. Um, then they get checked in and we're not charging overdue fines. So people oh. don't have to worry about that. Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> um, and once they've been quarantined for 72 hours, we do check them in um, and then they'll go back into circulation. Oh, wow. Awesome. Um, so I know you, you mentioned like, I know a lot libraries tend to have like a lot of, you know, resources for, for kids and things like that. And with the kids being out of school was there, um, how were you still able to meet the needs of, um, the younger population? How did that, you know, transfer over when the libraries closed down? Allison. Sure. So um, we have four children's librarians throughout over the three branches, and we each um, do one story time per week on the library's Facebook page. So Tuesday through Friday, um, there's a story time each morning. And that's just super fun. I mean, it was definitely a learning curve for us to figure out how to do this online uh, when we were so used to working with the actual kids who we all love. Right. We miss these kids. So, um, so we each do an online story time, and then there's been a number of other children's programs that have been woven in. Um, Jeff Checo, who's a local author, has done some great work. Uh, Regina Hansen, who's a local professor, did a writing class for kids online. Um, our Kids Book Club maintained. What else? A number of other things um, in March, April, and May, and June. And then we've just kicked off our summer reading program, which looks a little different this year than it has in the past. Um, In the past, kids come into the library, uh, they log their reading throughout the week, tell the librarians about what they're reading. It's very back and forth engaging and they get a little um, prize each week, um, as well as a lot of in-person programs. Typically, this year, (laughs) we have um, an online reading challenge form that kids can fill out each week, again, accessible through our website. And it has all sorts of silly challenges like read outside, you know, read in the bathtub, read to someone older than you, things like that. Um, And if they fill that out online, they get a virtual badge. It looks different every week. One of our children's librarians created them. Megan did. They're they're really cute. Um, And then every Monday, we're also having a program, again, online, um, either something that's run by one of the librarians or an outside programmer. So sing-alongs. what else are we doing? Just kind of different shows. Oh, magic tricks. Yes, magic tricks. Oh my god! Um, yeah, a theater program in August. So all sorts of different things. And we're also working with. Um, I'm thinking about like Art Beat, which is coming up. Mm-hmm. So the children's librarians are actually have a big role in um, for like having a library arts council connection too, because um, we typically have a table at Art Beat. So um, they reached out to us and asked if there was anything that we could help contribute. And we were like, well, I say we, but it was the children's librarians were happy to do it. And I should also say, you know, we have a really nice team of um, librarians behind the scenes that are responsible for all of our social media content and helping get everybody on the same page and working together. So it really, it is a team effort. It requires so much communication. We like have a Slack page now because it was just easier for that team to work with like that. All these Zoom meetings that we're having, so many emails, I mean, and phone calls, we're always in touch with each other. Yeah, that that's amazing. Did you, um, yeah, you guys have so many great ideas. I I'm like, you know, blown away how, how, how many, how, how much detail went into, um, all the new stuff for the kids. Did you outsource for help with that? Like even all like the technical stuff or was it all just like between all the libraries and the different municipalities? Like how many different people had their hands in this? 
So every library does their own thing, right? Essentially with programming um, for the most part. And so really there's just a bunch of librarians all over the place that are doing really wonderful things. And we all do get inspiration from each other and talk and try to be collaborative with ideas and that sort of thing. As Allison had mentioned, um, so Jeff Chekai, he's a local artist, musician, Somerville resident. We worked directly with him so he could provide some programming um, virtually for the library. We've had a puppet presenter, um, and actually a few. Allison knows all of these more than I, more than I do. But again, like Lloyd Schwartz is another person that we work with, and oh, the other great thing I just remembered. I keep remembering all these things, but Maida. So we have. Um, a woman who is a friend of the library. And so she was offering a weekly kind of craft. It was more like a knitting, crocheting, needlepoint group. They used to come in weekly, I think on Wednesdays for a couple of hours. So that she was one of the first people that started offering a library, virtual library program. She was like, I would really like to see if I can get a bunch of crafters together. Um, I have access to a Zoom account. Is, you know, can we go ahead and try it? We were like, absolutely. And her program is doing better virtually than it did in person. Because people, like, first of all, we never had enough space. Not, I mean, they would get probably, I'd say, a half dozen people on a fairly regular basis, which is great. But I think they're getting more than that now. And even when we did get, say, a half dozen people, they were all elbow, like, they didn't have enough room because mm -hmm. the space was small. At any rate, so, yeah, we work with, you know, everybody and anybody. If things ever get back to normal, do you think you may keep that program the way it is? Because it seems like the online does have a lot of advantages. Like you said, like, you don't have to worry about space. Like it's more accommodating. Do you think some programs will stay virtual even, you know, if things start to get back to normal and we ever get out of this? Yeah, I don't see, um, I think it's going to be a while still before we have patrons back in the buildings. Right. And so we'll continue to do virtual um, programming for, you know, just because of that. And then when we do get to a point where we can have people in the building, we still probably are not going to be doing programming. I don't see a scenario where we're offering programming before the end of the year because we do want to, I think it's important to stay in line with what the city's doing and, you know, keep being mindful of um, social distancing. So it, it is, a, will be and continue to be a big part of what we do. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I have one one more question. I know that you talked a little bit about all the virtual programs that um, you've been offering, like throughout the um, throughout the closing. But are there any more that you want to highlight and share with our viewers where they could find them? Well, actually, I mean, right now, I think what I, I would love for us to highlight is the fact that people actually can walk up to our libraries because that's been a big transition for us and we're, we're missing everybody. Right. So, you know, whoever's watching or listening, just know that we're there now. We're there Monday through Friday, um, pretty much from 9am to 6pm. And uh, both our East branch and our main library are open on Saturdays from nine to one. So whether you're doing things all virtually still and through email or whether you want to call us and talk to like one of us, we will do whatever we can to pull together materials for you, request them, you know, work with subjects, anything. Um, if you can get to the library and, and pick up a bag of books. So. Awesome. Wonderful. Allison, any other virtual? Yeah. No, I think that's really the most important yeah. thing is that we're, we're here to help people with whatever they need from the library. Yeah. That's wonderful. I'm so impressed. Is there anything else that both of you would like to add? No, just thank you. And come by the library and pick stuff up. And, you know, it is okay for you. If you have things at home now, you can return them. Still put them in our book drops because that's how we're quarantining material.
but yeah, we're open for business as far as putting things back in your hands. So awesome. And I think we're going to, um, we, I think we're going to post the link so people can figure out where to go so they could, um, still get, um, their orders for books and stuff and make sure that they can find it and it's easily accessible to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking with me today. This has been a great conversation. You guys are doing a wonderful job. It was nice to meet you. Always nice to see the West Branch Library in my conversations (laughs) with Alex. (laughs) We'll be there in real life. Thanks so much. (laughs)